Yeah, it's um, it's been really good. So I opened the gallery here. Um, I think something that's beautiful about the building is it does use creativity. You could, it's the fact that we're still making mm. in here. I think is really nice. Um, and so I launched the gallery because that had been a little pipe dream, which was wonderful. Um, and then it's evolved. So since then, we've launched Ashes with Art, which is another business stemming from mine. We've done the windows on the pier, which is another um, offshoot for my business. And we're about to launch another business downstairs for personalised jewellery. So the building has allowed us to expand and, and do lots of things and employ people. So that's that's great. We've got four full time members of staff now, wow. plus Danny and myself. So that's six people, which starting from just little old me is is mm. is pretty good, really. Very, very so good. Um, yeah, I'm quite proud. And yeah. can you explain a little bit more about the windows on the pier, what that is and how you're involved with that? Um so that is an amazing project. That is um initi an initiative. Um done by Paul Holden, who's part of the Worthing Journal, which is a local magazine. Um, and it was his concept, his idea. And basically on the windbreak on Worthing Pier, um, each slot, each window is being filled up with, um, with a window of people's choices, whether it's a charity, a society, a memorial, um, or just a celebration of, of something or someone. Um, and it's becoming quite a tourist attraction, I think. Mm. People are really enjoying it, and I think of all ages as well, which is very inclusive. So, so I'm quite proud to be part of that. I think I've done 150 windows now 150. for it. There's only seven slots left. So, yeah, it's quite a monumental project, and it's been going on for four years, and once they're full, they're full. Mm. So... We're getting we're getting towards the end. There's still a bit of a backlog, but I'm getting there. So yeah, yeah it's really good. And, and they, they'll be there for a long, long time, won't they? Hopefully. In theory, for forever, whatever forever is. So um, yeah, and because glass doesn't perish or anything, it's. Uh, and is it toughened against vandalism? Um, you've got on either side of the glass windows. There's perspex protecting it, and it's a good distance away. So. It, it it would take some doing and touch wood we haven't had any well, vandalism yeah. yet so uh, and the um the ashes for remembrance perhaps tell us a little bit about what that um is. so the ashes with art is something that i've been doing for about 20 years out of the 25 that i've been in business and it's using people's cremation ashes and incorporating them into either the jewelry or the artwork and um, we very much see it as more providing a service rather than selling a product um, and to make something that is so incredibly important and precious to people is an absolute honour. Gets me a little bit emotional actually because um, it's yeah that's wow wow for people to you know trust not trust that's the wrong word to um, enable us to to make something that is so so precious mm. is yeah amazing. So, okay. but we work. Did you come up with that idea? Um, 20 years ago, one of my repeat clients um, asked me to do something with their daughter's ashes, and it kind of just escalated from there. Um, and then, as I say, five years ago, we launched that as a separate entity because it's a different market um, and audience. So we, we branched it out as a separate entity, and it's. it's yeah, people love us and love what it's about. And I think because we do it with compassion and respect. Um, and also we use proper old fashioned um, or traditional methods, I should say. So we actually set the stones and really make the artwork. Um, a lot of companies out there use resin, whereas nobody's ever had an heirloom in plastic. Um, or they glue the stones in, and I think that's criminal, again, when you're trusted to do something so remarkable to cut corners like that. Mm. Anyway, mm. <laughs> it's and, not how we do it. And do you find, both with the windows and, and with the, the Ashes for Art, do you find that most of the people who come to you are through personal recommendations? Is that we get you? loads of personal rec Because, as I say, it's... Um, so with the windows on the pier, there's only a few people that are doing the windows anyway. Um, and as I say, I think there's only eight windows on there that I haven't done and kind of 150 
it will be 200 I think that I will have done um, and then with the ashes ashes with art we we're so respectable you know and and transparent we let people come in they can put the ashes in themselves um we've got a really small but incredibly tight team and the people that we employ we will only employ the highest standard of people so um you know you you get the service you deserve yeah. so yeah. yeah so do you remember the different little shops yes i do oh. uh, it's quite like that because that's uh, right round the corner from me. Mm. So, uh, yeah, you had the news agents where they, um, uh, well, it is still a news agents. You had a sort of corner shop where the funeral director is at the moment. You know, fairly big one, sort of a traditional one, if you like. And uh, there was another little, uh, not corner shop because it wasn't on the corner, but next door to the. Uh, News agent, just a little um, grocery store. I don't know how they made it, made money out of it. It was, you know, it couldn't be much. But I did go there. I, um, yeah, I like Sue and Jim, and Jim was a bit of a cheeky one. And I was walking past one day, and he he came out the door and says, "Oh, you, get in here and buy something." <laughs> <laughs> so I did. <laughs> Man. But uh, obviously, yeah, they couldn't make that uh, last. No. What else? And the, the thing that I remember, actually, sort of just at the bottom of, uh, um, what's this road here, the Upper High Street, right at the bottom, there used to be a butcher's shop. Mm. And I would think possibly, you know, I'm not sure they had the yard behind. I don't know, sort of, that sort of, they were slaughtering behind there, but that shop's now disappeared. You wouldn't know it was there. So, uh, yes, I used those shops before the likes of, you know, Morrison's and Co-op as it was before that. Um, so yeah, they... I, I quite liked that. And I was brought up in a shop, so somehow I had an affinity, so, you know, that, that sort of thing as well. So they must have closed over 20 years ago then? Probably. Yeah. Mm. Yes, it must be ages ago. Mm. Mm. Ages ago. I don't know, I can't remember, I can't track the time really. Over 20 years, I think it's safe to assume. Yeah, yeah, long gone. And you've not been here so 15 years. Yeah, been. okay. They, none of them, were, there's only ever been that corner shop. No, been here. no, it, uh, yeah, there were, I can remember at least three shops there. Mm. And uh, there's that weird, um, there was a specialist uh, shoe shop just up near the um, the castle as well. It was a bit odd. And you had the barbers, that un until recently was still there, yes. just down the yeah. Newlands Road. Yeah. And there was another place. But, you said, know, there are things dotted around. It's there odd. was a little shop at the other end of Upper High Street, uh, near towards the uh, Swan. Yes, uh, I think I remember it. I'm glad you mentioned that, because I did go in there. Many years ago, and that's another place. I was thinking, how do you make a living? Yes, that's right. Right next to the what used to be WVS place. Mm. Yeah. Okay. And, and then, mean? and over that, you know, one thing leads to another, doesn't it? And over the other side was the scrap merchant, mm -hmm. and that was a sort of wonderful place. Yeah. You know, obviously been there for for many a year. So. Right. But certainly at the bottom of the road, the forge was actually a forge with a blacksmith working in it. Um, the Hollies was the WRVS office with the Meals on Wheels kitchen coming and going. And opposite them was Kennard's scrapyard. So all sorts of things were happening there. And it was a lovely old, old building, a lovely old uh, stable building. Um, I'm sure there are photographs of it. And, and then Coming up, there was the little newsagent shop, which was run by um, a Ugandan Ugandan Asian family. Um, Is there a convenience of, of shopping here? Oh, completely. You know, you're just plonked straight in the centre of three within five minutes. We're a bit spoiled with that. So, yes, you were saying we don't use the car so much. You don't even need to do that for for shopping. You just pop down Waitrose, Liddles, Morrison's. So, yes, it's a really convenient place to live. Mm -hmm. Do you use the little corner shop at all? Um, sometimes, yeah. Only, Not often. No, very rarely, really. Just emergencies. Mm. When supermarkets are closed late at night, maybe. Yeah, 
Not very much, but it's it's nice to have it there. Well, so <laughs> when we were first here, we had um, butchers at the bottom. Oh, really? Yeah, there well, was a butchers. the funeral director now? Yeah, well, just up from the, the funeral oh. director was a corner shop. So that was like a convenience yeah. store. A sweet shop and all sorts of things in there. Next to him, where they've got the... It's a house now, actually. Mm. So the first house up from where they put the funeral vans, mm. that was a butcher's. We had... Um, There's a funny little feature on the roof of it, isn't it? It's where they used to cure bacon and stuff. Okay. Which is now a part of the funeral directors. Mm. So when did that go then? Oh, gosh. Mm -hmm. At least 20, might have even been a bit more than that. Then we had a greengrocer's around the corner yep. um, as well. Um, and oh, uh, To the right? E at, at uh, the yes, next to where you've got the corner shop. Mm. And there was a, that, so that was a news agent's. And then there was a greengrocer's next to that. Oh. Was there an Andrette? No, maybe no. I've made that up. I might, I've made that up. There was a, there was a corner, corner shop... Um, Corner shop is a generic term, right? It wasn't on the corner, so I suppose it doesn't really qualify. But um, in the, the last house on the other side of the road, right up the top, oh, up a high street, oh. up, yeah, oh, that way, yep, yeah, was the shop up there, yeah, on the right hand side. And that's now a house, is it? Yeah, yeah, that went to a long time ago, didn't it? I guess, yeah, yeah. And what sort of shop was that? Then? That was a uh, just like a corner shop, a convenient uh, sweet shop. Yeah, sort of, an yeah. inconvenient shop. Yeah. Oh, I, I knew there were these shops. I had no idea they were that mm. recent. Mm, yeah. So what's now the corner shop? Was yes. a news agent. Yeah. So when did it become a, a general shop then? Ooh. Do you know what, Chris? Time goes so quickly. Yeah. 15 years ago? Maybe. I'm guessing. Because we've been Sophie here 15 might remember years. More. Yeah, was it always been, that? It's always been, oh, yeah. 20 years? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. Actually, the girls would probably know more. So there was a lot of retail here, wasn't there, when you moved then? Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. I suppose people didn't drive around as much. No. So, you know, like, you needed to do your shopping locally. Mm. I mean, it was funny, when we went to look at buying a house oh, in yeah. Newlands Road, there'd been a lot of flooding that particular autumn. And there was photographs of people kayaking up up the road. And um, so we'd sort of shown some interest in the house down there and then heard about this. So I went into the corner shop, the, the, the convenience stores, or, um, and asked him about it. And he said, no, he said, nothing, nothing. Look, I don't know what you're on about. He said, look, come through. And he's just, he's, he had lino up the walls. <laughs> <laughs> and I then went knocking on doors. Actually, it was before we bought Cranworth. It was, yeah, yeah. It was 114 Newlands Road we looked at. That's right. Um, and um, I went then knocking on doors. And um, they said, oh, yeah. And I noticed I had sandbags outside the, the, the houses. I thought, oh, this is a bit strange. And I heard all sorts of tales. Somebody's rabbits had drowned in the back garden because of the flood so that was a no-no then I mean they've you know it's not like although it does flood a little bit I think sometimes in, when Lucy lived in Station Road that's our oldest daughter it, it did flood that year but nothing like it did sort of 30 40 years ago so yeah gosh so when of all those little shops you mentioned yeah when, when did the last one go then so when what was the funeral director was a, a general shop yes yes so when did that become a funeral director's then well, that must have been... Oh, Lucy... Your dad. Your dad was in there. My dad was buried by him. Yeah, he, his body was in there. I remember yeah, that's that. Right. So when did yeah. he die? <laughs> but I, I'll tell you, Lucy used to babysit with Katie... Yes, yes. ...for the yes. woman, the wife. Yes, and they were, they were 14... So, and she's now 44. So it was 30 years ago. So oh, yeah. quite a long time ago, actually, it turns yeah. out, yeah. yes. Well, that's, I've, I've learned something there, because I, I no idea those shops were there that recently. I thought mm. they'd all gone in the 50s or something. Oh, no, no, no. 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 And obviously the Globe was there. Yes, the yeah. yes. And the Swan and the yes. Anchor. Yes. Yeah, the Anchor, yeah. yeah. And Safe, it was, was it Safeways? Safeways, or was it some before yeah. Safeways? We had Safeways there, but before that, it was a Ford dealer's. Okay. Yeah. It was sales, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And we also had lots of little shops going up um, where where Little's is. Mm. There was a oh, row yeah. of row of shops going up there, that. weren't there? There was that Patty and Paul shop up there, yeah. wasn't there? And, that was a fish and chip uh, shop. Yeah. And the old second hand bookshop. Yeah. Uh, and, and they were all demolished in I think 
eight, early mid 80s. 80s. Yeah. Well, that must have yeah. been when they put that road yes. in there. Yeah. The dual carriageway to nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's the one. <laughs>